Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. Today I'm in my university's lecture theatre, one of many, and we're going to be going through the Shadows of Evil Brick Cipher. Now, I've already posted the solution in a video, and people were very happy with that, but they want more. They want the answer to how I solved it, and so that's what I'm going to try and impart to you today. It's going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to explain my thinking behind what I did, and then show you that it definitely works, and what I posted, M is interested in these worthless beings, all his work will be undone, X, is exactly what you get when you do this particular method to cryptanalyze and solve the cipher. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm going to walk you through what they gave us, first of all, and then I'm going to sort of talk a little bit about my thinking and my approach to what I needed to do in order to get it sorted. So, this here is in white, right? I'm hoping that you can see that okay. Fingers crossed it's actually focusing on it okay. Fingers crossed. So, this here is what was given to us. They gave us this 25 letter long string of characters. Then, a new line down, there's another 25 letter long string of characters. They then give us a, I think it's 58 character long line. So this in red is one line of characters. It's so long I couldn't fit it on this massive blackboard in one line, but it's a much longer line of characters. And these three things comprise all the information we've been given. We don't have any other info at all. We have the fact that it's on the map Shadows of Evil, but other than that, nothing. So my first approach, my first thoughts rather, the approach that I took was, okay, this is 25 letters long. This is 25 letters long. So, interestingly enough, they're both the same number of characters long. Can we draw any conclusions from that? Are there any ideas we might have as to why 25 might be significant? I also then noticed, with the help of my buddy Nick, we were talking about this and discussing ideas, we noticed that there's no J in this string of characters. If you look, every single letter in the alphabet is present here apart from the letter J. And funnily enough, the exact same thing is seen here. Every single letter is present apart from the letter J. So, what we surmised from that, what I surmised from it, is that there's a good chance that what this is, is an alphabet that has been scrambled and the J has been removed. So, alphabet would be 26 letters long, normally would just be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. Now it's a, O, G, N, K, Z, B, C, P, etc. with no J's in there. What's actually happened, funnily enough, is that the J has been absorbed into the letter I. That's what this is. What you're seeing here is the shortening of the alphabet such that it is now 25 letters long. And we have two of them. And the order is different each time. So what Treyarch could have done is say, okay, we're gonna give them a key which they'll then have to use to scramble an alphabet, which they'll then have to use to solve the cipher. But they were nice to us. They actually made it very simple and straightforward. They gave us an alphabet order. They gave us another alphabet order. And what I was then at this point thinking is that this here is probably the, the sorry, not the plain text, the cipher text. This is what we have to solve. So these two, in a sense, are the keys. We've been given the keys to crack the cipher, and all it took was a little bit of thinking about what the significance of a 25 letter long alphabet would mean, what it would be, what that significance would entail. So, what I've done, okay, just here, is I've drawn a grid, right? And you'll notice that it's a five by five grid. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So, five by five grid. If you have an alphabet, a regular alphabet, such as the one that we're familiar with, which is 26 letters long, you'll notice that if you try to fill the grid, you'll end up with a, a letter miss, uh, not a letter missing, sorry, a letter left over. You'll have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, etc. You'll get Y in this box here, and then you'll have Z, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit in. There's a Z, and it's, oh, that's a terrible Z. Anyway, you get the point. It doesn't fit within this 5x5 five five grid, because obviously 26 letters don't go into 25 boxes. So, what I started thinking was maybe what Treyarch have done is they've said, we need a 5x5 five five grid of letters, but we have a 26 letter long alphabet, let's just screw the J's, we'll absorb them into the I's, and that gives us the possibility of using a 5x5 five five grid for something. So then, the question becomes, why might Treyarch 
want to give us a 5x5 grid? And also, maybe more importantly than that, why might they want to give us two 5x5 grids of scrambled alphabets? Because that fits perfectly fine into a 5x5 grid. And so does this one here. So I'm thinking, right, we've got two scrambled alphabets. We've got potentially two 5x5 grids. I need a cipher that is going to let me use two scrambled alphabets to map letters using those alphabets to potentially other alphabets which are not enciphered, they're plain text alphabets in regular order. And so what I ended up doing was the following. This right here, I'm hoping you can see that okay. Uh, let me just make sure. Hello, how are you doing? Hmm. That right there is a regular alphabet. Okay, so this, this part is a regular alphabet, but you'll notice that it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, uh, 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 no J. The J has been absorbed. Again, we need to absorb it so that it's five by five, 25 letters long. So it goes H, I, J, K, L, M, N, etc. The same has been done down here. We've got another five by five grid, all right? So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, N, K, L, M, N, O, P, etc. right? So we've got plain text alphabets. These are alphabets that do not have any strange order to them. They are unordered in the sense that they're in the regular order we would expect. These alphabets are the ones from up there. So this one is in purple. Again, hoping you can see it okay. Fingers crossed. So this is A O G N K Z B C P S E W F M etc. And this one down here, H V W F C T G Q M Z P E S Y. So yes, I did read that out right. So these are our scrambled alphabets, okay? So I've taken the top line and put it in the top left, and I've taken the bottom line and I put it in the bottom right. Did I say left? Top right there, bottom left here, okay? Those, I just want to make it extremely clear, are exactly what we had here. So this this top line, okay, that is now along here, there, right? And this line here, starting with H, V, W, F, C, T, G, I'll bring this up, is here. H, V, W, F, C, T, G, C, C, T, G, there you go. You get the idea. So those alphabets have been put into this grid. And the reason I've written it out thusly is as follows. I want to be able to say in our cipher text, which is just here, again, I'm looking at the recording to make sure that you can sort of see it. Maybe it's probably a little difficult because of the lighting. I apologize about that. But MG, actually, you know what? Let me see if I can do this real quick. Oh, actually, no, let's not do that. I don't know what that button does. So back to the video. <laughs> We're going to have MG, right? Notice that the beginning of the cipher is MG. I'm going to write this out in the description so you guys can follow along yourselves. M, G here. So what that is going to mean is that using this, the actual sort of important part, I suppose, of this decipherment process is what we do. How the hell do you move from that cipher text, which I've showed you and which is in the description to some plain text that you can understand? Well, looking in this grid for the letter M, we notice, let me get a different color because this color isn't gonna be very helpful at all. Let's go for a blue, let's see how that looks. So we've got MG, so we're gonna locate M in this first alphabet grid, okay? M happens to be there, right? We're also going to locate G in this alphabet grid. G in this alphabet grid is here. And so my reasoning for writing the whole grid out like this is making itself a lot more clear now, hopefully, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, we're at M, right? We're going to go from M all the way along until we get into the column which G is located in, okay? So we've gone from M here all the way along to the G column, and that gives us a letter M deciphered. So that is a plain text letter M. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write M. Boom! Progress. We're going to do the same thing for G now. So G is here, okay, and we're going to come all the way along until we're in the same column that M is contained in. So G comes along and we get the letter I. 
So that then is our second letter. M, that's a crappy colour. I'm going to do white instead. <laughs> so we then get M, I, next pair. The reason I'm cutting that there, most likely, is because I made a little error with what I'd written out originally, so I confused myself. Not to worry though, if I can find some blue chalk, we can continue this process at once. Let's switch to green, I'm feeling fruity. Yellow actually sounds good. So we've now got M-G-I-Q. That is the ciphertext that we're using. We've got the M-G translating to M-I. So the next bit is gonna be I-Q. So we're gonna find I, which is there. We're gonna find Q, not O. We're gonna find Q, which is here. And so we're gonna go I, moving along, I hope you're following this guys, I, moving along to the column in which Q is located, yeah, so that gives us an S, so we can bring this bad boy up and get an S on there, then, oh, sorry, we're going to put it down again, we're going to go from Q back along, Q's coming along until it's in the same column as the I, so that's going to be an I, so M is... I, and I think you guys get the picture. If we kept going now, MR, so we'd be going from the M there, we'd be going to the R here, we'd bring that along, boom, 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 we get an S, M is, oh sorry, do we get an S? No, I misread that. M comes along, we get the, get the N that's there, okay? So let me just push this bad boy up. M is in, then going from the R back over to the M, we come along, we get a T, so inter, and eventually what happens, and I promise you that this is the case, it falls through very nicely. So I just restarted the recording to make sure that it was all contained within the camera and didn't stop recording as I was talking. We end up very nicely with the following. M is interested in these, oh, how's that, these worthless things, all his work will be undone. X. So, the question that people were then asking me is, Mr. Ruffle Waffles, why is there an X here? It makes no sense. Well, let's look at that final pair of letters in the ciphertext, shall we? GK, all right? We're gonna look at the GK. GK Nova 6 was a happier time and I miss it greatly. So, GK on our grid for the final pair is gonna be, where's G on here? There, boom. G, happy with that, hopefully. And we're going to be finding K in this grid. Boom. There's the K. Lovely stuff. So, we are going to go from G along to the column in which K is located. And that's going to give us the E that's there. So that is why we have the E here. Remember, that has to be the, the first letter because it's the G to uh, to K mapping rather than the K to G mapping. We're going to do the K to G mapping now. We're going to come from K along to G. And what does that give us? It gives us the X. So that X there, right, is exactly why we have the following message. Undone and then an X. What that will mean and signify, we don't necessarily know. It's hard to say right now, and I'm going to be posting videos, and already have posted some videos, talking about the significance of this message in relation to the story on the map. But for now, I want to keep this as generally a technical video, explaining my thinking behind what I was doing when I solved this, and hopefully you guys have been able to follow along with the stuff that's been in the description, and do this for yourselves as well. Corroborate your findings and or my findings rather, make sure that I'm correct and I haven't made any errors. I believe that I've done this correctly and 
I mean, this certainly looks like it's as it's meant to look, really. I mean, the M is definitely correct, and the X is definitely correct, and they're the two that would be contentious, I suppose, because they're both letters that could really be anything. They're very much variables. So, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. I've tried to explain this as clearly as I could from the very first things that I was doing here, looking at this and saying, there's no J, so chances are we're working with a shortened alphabet, and what that might mean, the sort of triggers that went off in my head, the alarm bells, saying, this is now 25 letters as long, so is this, so there's a good chance that there's some relation there. We can sort of project an idea of there being maybe a cipher that uses a 25 letter long alphabet and another 25 letter long alphabet and then the ciphertext obviously. We can project that into the future and say if we believe that to be the case, what can we do to this cipher to try and get some plain text and fiddling with it a little bit, you find that it actually comes out quite nicely. There are all sorts of little tricks you can try. For example, actually, just before I end the video, I want to give you one little trick that is very useful for stuff like this. If you got given in your ciphertext right here, let's say, I'm going to go all the way through. Let's say you got given a pair of letters that was something like T, G, right? Let's say you saw that coming up multiple times, okay? So this is a pair that appears several times in your ciphertext. This bigram, these two letters, when attached together, could translate to, for example, TH. It's completely possible that TH, which is a very common pair of letters, will come up frequently, and so TG, if it's frequent, could map to TH. You see my reasoning here. What I'm essentially saying is that if you have common bigrams, you can then say there's a good chance that they map to common bigrams. Similarly, you've obviously got your frequency analysis that you would do on other ciphers, like let's say you've got a substitution cipher, and it's a fairly long cipher, so frequency analysis is relevant and viable and doable. Then you can look at the frequencies of certain letters in your ciphertext, let's say the letter N, or no, let's say the letter Y is the most common letter by far, then you can say, chances are, it's fairly likely that that is going to give you an E when you decipher it into plain text, because E is the most common letter in the English language. So, I've been Mr. Waffles. Thanks for watching. I'm going to cut it off here. See you next time. Bye-bye.